All right, John chapter 21. We're down now through the first 14 verses, and uh, we are going to pick up now in verse 15. So we are done with the eighth miracle in the book. And uh, when he says, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter. So when they had dined, that comes out of verse 12. There were Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. He had the provisions already ready for them. He, they had been out uh, toiling all night in their own energy. He comes along and says, Here, do it my way. You can't do this without me. And he then tells them to throw the nets over on the right side. They pull in 153 great fishes. Uh, and then he has already has on the shore a fire going and the fish is going and bread there. And yet he, he brings them in and they've been eating a meal. And he says, you come, little flock, 12 apostles, the true Israel of God, and then bring the Gentiles in with you as well and allow them to participate in it. That's in the picture. Um, if you come back with me to Isaiah chapter... Oh, no, it's not Isaiah. How about Ezekiel 36? When they come and dine with the Lord in John 21, that picture of the kingdom, of the kingdom blessing, of them bringing everything in and so forth. He, he says, you guys come, the provisions are there, and then bring the great fish, bring your catch with you. And the idea behind that, Ezekiel 36, you have the issue of the new covenant given. It starts there in verse 24 and in the kingdom, and he walks down, he's going to put a new heart in him, a new spirit. And if you look over at verse 37, Thus saith the Lord, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Now the them, that is the Gentile nations that have underneath the Matthew 28 subcommission where Israel has gone out and been uh, gathering in the fishes, if you will, their new heart says, what you're going to do for us, do it for them as well. I will increase them with men like a flock, and as a holy flock, as a flock of Jerusalem and their solemn feast, and so on. So back here in John 21, you're seeing a picture of that as he's educating and recommissioning, re-getting re this stuff to going. Verse 14, um, well, verse 13, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So again, the first time, chapter 20, Thomas is not with them. Then the second time, Thomas is with them. And now it's the seven out of the 11 and, and so forth. So verse 15, so when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Now, it's very interesting. They have been at the meal. The meal is over. The fellowship meal is over. The, that the, they've participated in the blessings and so forth. And, and again, <laughs> We were a couple weeks, five weeks ago, we were studying about the Lord's table. And even in the account of the Lord's table, it's after the meal is over, then he does. So that's been the routine of the Lord all along. We have a meal, then I'm going to tell you some other things we're going to do afterward. So he looks to Peter, and after the meal now, he's going to focus in on Peter. And Peter is going to be the focus here down through uh, really uh, 20, verse 20, 21, and so forth. And the reason of that is because of Peter and his three denials. Three times, if you look there at verse 15, he said to Peter, do you love me? Peter says, I love you. He says, feed my lambs, verse 16. He saith to Simon again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? 
He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me, Peter, and so forth. So the three time, the reason there are three of these questions is because they're going to offset the three denials of the, by the Lord, uh, of, of Peter of the Lord. And those offsets, and, and the reason it's here, and the reason he gives three questions, do you love me, Peter, is so that he has a confession of Peter now that the now that the little flock has been recommissioned and reestablished, now he's going to take Peter and reestablish Peter as its head and as, as its leader. And you'll notice in verse 15, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, and he go, he bring, he's bringing Peter here, uh, uh, he's going to recommission Peter, if you will. Now, notice he calls him Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas. Now, he's bringing Peter back in Peter's mind to something very important. Come back to Luke 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. And drop down, well, well verse 28. There, there's something that ha when, when he calls him Simon, that uh, he, the Lord is bringing an event back up in Peter's mind. Luke 22, 28, ye are they, and again, he's in the upper room with them. Uh, Judas is gone to uh, betray him. They're going to be going to the garden here where it all takes place. And he says, ye are they, and that's the little flock, which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So the, this is, again, in the upper room before the cross, he's bringing this back up in Peter's mind in John 21, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith will that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both in the prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou, ha thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Now, you're going to need to remember that thing about the Peter saying there in verse 33, I'm ready to go with thee both in the prison and in the death. Just kind of keep that in the back of in the back forefront of your mind as we go through John here. Three times he's going to do what? Deny the Lord. And when the Lord says, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, I'm ready to go to prison and to death with for you. So Simon, when he calls him Simon, 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 it's kind of like you do with your kids. You know, Ricky, 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 Ricky. Simon, 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 Simon. What the Lord is doing with Simon here with Peter, you don't understand what you're talking about when you say you'll go to prison and death for, with me. You have no clue what you're doing here. And before the day's over, you're going to deny me three times. So just Simon, Simon, Simon. Now, the wonderful thing there in verse 31 is the thing there where he says, And the Lord said, <coughs> Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee. The, the, it's a fascinating thing there. Simon, Simon, Simon. I, I hold on to Luke 22. Uh, let's go run back to John 1 just real quick. John 1. Simon, his name Simon Peter. Simon is his name before he knew Christ. Is his name Simon. Verse 40. John 1, 40. 
One of the one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Now, Cephas, and a little bit over there in Matthew, he looks at over, well, just come over there to Matthew 16. He's going to look in Matthew 16. He's going to do something here. And I'll be honest with you, every time that somebody has their name changed, the first name change in Scripture is Abraham, Abram to Abraham. And it's a significant event in that, like with Abram, Abram to Abraham, it's the issue of the covenant was established. And here with Simon Peter, him getting his name changed from Simon Peter, the condition you were before you met me, to verse 15, he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, notice, Barjona, changed his name there again. By the way, that's son of Jonas. That's what Barjona is, okay? <laughs> For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and so on. So when Peter has his name changed, come back there to Luke 22, from Simon Peter, the condition he was in prior to meeting the Lord, now he's going to be called Peter, and then the Lord t says, there's a rock here. The rock there obviously isn't Peter. I mean, Cephas, he's called a rock. That's, got a def that's the Aramaic issues. But the rock in Matthew 16 is literally the confession of, of Peter there that he is the son of the living God. That's the rock. We're gonna, Peter, I'm going to build my church, and I'm going to give you the keys based upon your confession of who I am. And I'm going to give you, when he hands him the keys, he gives him the responsibility of leading the church that's going to be built on the foundation of the confession of Peter in, chapter, in verse 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So in Luke 22, when he's going to address him here as... Simon, 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 not in his role as Peter, the leader, the key holder. Here he's addressing Simon in a condition that's not Peter. Then he says there in verse 31, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee. That's Peter. The Lord's praying for Peter. The, by the way, the you, in verse 31, Satan hath desired to have you. That's the whole of the little flock. And that's where the these and the ye's and the you's and all that second personal pronouns and all singular and plural stuff in Scripture is so important because if I say you, do I mean you the group or do I mean you, Bruce? You don't know until you hear the conversation. The conversation here is, is he's telling Simon, 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 <laughs> you don't get what's going on here, buddy. You're operating in your old ways again. And that is Satan wants to have the group, but I'm going to pray for you specifically, Simon, thee, that when Satan, when Satan wants all the brethren, he wants all of the little flock, you need to be ready, Peter. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Well, did it fail? Yeah, he denied the Lord three times. And when thou art converted. Isn't that interesting? 
there's John 21. When the Lord comes in and gets the three confessions out of him, that demonstrates where his heart is now. So then he can then go strengthen the brethren. He can then go feed the sheep, feed the lambs, feed the sheep. So what's going on here? Now watch verse 33. And he, that's Simon, Peter, said unto the Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both in the present and to death. You see, here Peter's still trusting in himself. He still has confidence in himself. Lord, I love you. You know I love you. I will never fail you. And Jesus says, yeah, you will. Three times before the end of the night, you're going to deny me. You operating in the energy of your own flesh, you're going to deny me. So Peter, Simon Peter, that, that title, is bringing Peter in his thinking back to the place where, he's, where his confidence is in the wrong place. It's in himself. And he needs to understand that he can't trust himself. He needs to trust Christ. When he prays for Peter, he doesn't pray that Peter would not fail, fall. He says, when you do fall, still understand here. When you get that sense of your own unworthiness, you can still be converted. You can still be restored. And then you have the ability to then go out and restore the other brethren. So we're looking at Peter in John 21. We're looking at Peter's leadership and his roles. Simon, Simon. Verse 31 of Luke 22, that's a, it's a warning to him. And when we studied this years ago, you know, I think back, we've, between Luke and John, we've got like eight years in study, you know, so you can't remember everything. I surely don't. And when we went through this, I tried to show you all of this. When you, when you mess it up, you're going to mess up, Pete. When you think that the source of your own abilities is where you're going to be and not in who you are in Christ, you're going to mess up. But when you do, I'm praying for you. And so when you come back here to, to John 21, when he says, Simon Peter, Peter is brought back, Simon, son of Jonas. In his mind, he is instantly brought back to the place where he, now this isn't years ago, this is just literally weeks ago, upper room, cross, we're eight days later, now we're a few more days out. Yeah, this isn't years. He instantly remembers, uh-oh, when the Lord called me Simon before, <laughs> you know. Go back there to Luke 22 just real quick. Something you got to catch in here too. I, <laughs> when, when mom or dad used to call me by my full name, I knew I was in trouble and I would remember. That's what Simon Peter's doing. He's like, uh-oh. I, I remember. Now, he, the, the event is the three denial. If you look at here at Luke 22, starting verse 57, and he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, after another con uh, confidentially affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. You see, it's in Peter's mind. He, 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 in the, so in 21 here, when... He says, Simon, son of Jonah. I mean, look, think about it. They've just had this wonderful event. They worked all night. Peter's doing it in the energy of his flesh, nothing. The Lord shows up, says, hey, throw it on the other side. They get it on the other side. They got a great harvest. They get in. The Lord says, bring your harvest in. Let's have a meal together. They sit, they eat. They're all done. And then the Lord turns and says, Simon, si Simon, son of Jonah. Jonah. 
part, again, your failure. And now I need to re-educate you. I need to, I need to convert you here. When you're converted, you're going to go and restore the brethren. So the question here, lovest thou me more than these? Now notice that very carefully. Peter, do you love me more than these guys around you? All these other people around you, they all love me too, but do you love me more? And again, he's offsetting the, I don't know him, the three. So in order to restore Peter's commission, he balances the three denials off with allowing Peter to make three confessions. And the confessions here are, well, you just notice the confessions. Notice what Peter says. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lamb. He doesn't start off well, but he gets better as he goes along here. And yet the Lord, again, he knew in Peter what was happening and what was going on. Again, Peter had said at the garden, Matthew 26, all they're going to forsake you, I won't. I love you more than any of these guys. I will never forsake you, Lord. I'm going to go to prison and to death with you. Peter trusted himself. He trusted his own loyalty. He trusted how much he loved God, not how much God loved him. So Peter's answer, yeah, Lord, I love you, you more than them. Now you'll notice in his answer, he says, Thou knowest that I love thee, period. He doesn't say more than them. <laughs> He's coming to his senses about maybe I shouldn't be trusting my own strength. Maybe I ought to be trusting him. I'm confident where I'm at. I'm trusting in myself, and yet what happens? Peter's learning that I can't do that. Then he says, feed, feed my lambs. The end of verse 16, when you ask him again, he says, feed my sheep. The end of verse 17, feed my sheep. So there's an edification process that's happening here. There's an edification process that happened first with Peter. And then for Peter to then turn and to go and to minister to the brethren. And he's literally describing in these three verses, 15, 16, and 17, to Peter... Here's what your ministry is going to be with, that little, with the little flock and with the believing remnant. Now come over to 2 Peter chapter 2. When he says, feed my lambs, a lamb is, a, is the baby sheep, it's children. 2 Peter 2, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2, 2 is good too, but it's not what I want to go to. 2 Peter or 1 Peter 2, verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. What do the newborn babes, what do the children want? They want the sincere milk. They, they want to grow. So the first thing when he says, my lambs, that the Lord points to, is, is the issue of, Peter, you need to feed my little ones, my children the little guys. Then he comes over and he says, feed the sheep. Feed the sh Get those guys in. That's the adults. Now he says, feed my sheep twice because adults learn as they continue to grow as well. So you're going to take the babes, bring them to adults and continue to teach them then you're going to have some that are already at adulthood. You're going to teach them as well. Okay. Now, come back to John 16, because he's already told them this in the upper room. John chapter 16. So, so the, the wonderful thing here in the feed my lambs and feed my sheep stuff is the edification process of moving people from babes to adults and who they are in Christ. 
John 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? I, I, here's the edification process, okay? How be it? When he, the Spirit of truth, has come. So after the Holy Spirit comes, after when the new covenant is ratified in them, so now we're in Acts 2, if you think about timing-wise. They get a taste of the new covenant. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter is there. What's he going to do? He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore say I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Now he's talking to the eleven in the upper room. Judas is gone, just got the eleven, and what are they going to do? They're going to come along and they're going to, there's going to be an edification process. The Holy Spirit's going to come teach you guys, and you guys are going to turn around and then teach the group. You're going to take the lambs, get them to adults. You're going to take the adults and edify them as well. And, and that's that issue in, in Hebrews 6 and verse 1 where he says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of the doctrines, and off you go. He says, look, we've laid all that in there already. Now we're going to move to perfection. We got you grounded, which is what they do in early Acts. Now we're moving on to perfection. And that's also why he's going to say, you guys should be the teachers, but instead you need someone to teach you. That someone ends up being the Holy Spirit. That's who that ends up being. Okay? So when you come back to John 21, and again, feed my sheep twice, he says it, because adults, they continue to grow. They never get it all down. And uh, Peter, I, he's even struggling with maturity and with growing, and yet he'll get there, and off he goes. But in verse 15, he says, feed my lambs. Right there, the Lord commits to Peter his little children. The Lord commits the ones that the Father gave to me. I'm out here doing with my children. Suffer the little ones to come. They have not, he has taken the authority and the responsibility out of his hand and gave it to Peter to take care of. And he does it right there. He took the children, the most valuable thing that the Lord had, and he put it back in Peter's hands once again. They were in Peter's hands before. Peter, you're the rock. We're going to do all this with you. You're the man, Pete. You're the leader. And then when Peter got kind of stuck on himself a little bit and, and his own strength and his own energy, he no doubt he loved the Lord, but he was missing the Lord's love for him. He goes out and denies him three times. He's, he, it's done. Verse 16, 21, 16. He said again to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Now, by, notice there the Lord dropped off more than any of these, <laughs> okay? He, me more than these. He dropped that off. The Lord does this time. And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Do you really love me? Now, when he says it the second time, now it's a searching question. He is searching Peter's heart now and teaching him where, he, where his confidence should be. Verse 17, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Again, to balance out the three denials, we've got the three, the three confessions. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? Now, do you remember in Luke 22 over there where we just read that after the third denial, the cock crows, P 
Peter runs out and does what? Weeps bitterly. Isn't that interesting? Here, what is he? He's grieved. By at this point, where Peter was grieved, Peter has completed his repenting, his restoration, his conviction. He, the issue now is settled. Remember in 1 Corinthians 15, we looked last Sunday at the 14 appearances, and there in Luke were the two on the road to Emmaus, and they said, I know Andy had been to Simon Peter, and now he to us, and then Paul says there that he was seen of Cephas first, and then of the two. Peter had that private, personal conversation with the Lord after the resurrection, and he is settling the issue here. And yet the Lord still questions his loyalty because he's educating Peter. He's driving it home. And Peter says, you know I love you. you Lord, you know that I love you. But notice how, how he says that. Probably the best thing he said here. And he saith unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. You ought to underline that. That's the best saying, that's the best answer Peter could get. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. When he says, Lord, you know all things, and you know I love you, at that moment, Peter put himself in the Lord's hand. And he was going to leave it to, to the Lord to evaluate his love and his heart, and then to tell him what he needed to do. No longer was Peter operating on his own love and his own strength. So the Lord, the last time, says, go feed my sheep. Three times, all three times, Christ is establishing love as the real issue, the real motivation. But at the same time, he's defining for you what love was to look like. We've had folks come through here, oh, you don't love us, blah, 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 blah. And I ask, well, I'm like, what do you think it, What do you think love should look like? Well, then they had their you know, huggy, feely, feely. Here, guess what? None of that is huggy, huggy, feely, feely, caring about anybody. The Lord defines what love looks like three times. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. So love, what does love look like in the body? In the, in the body, in the Bible. Edification. And the edification process. If you love me, do you love me? Yes, we love you. Then here's what true love will look like. It's feed my sheep. Paul does the same thing, by the way. With the, he uses the word charity. And he uses the work of love patience of the, you know, and so forth, the labor of love. What is all that doing? It's all about edification. So at this point, Peter's commission has been restored. He's been, Luke 22, he's been converted. Now watch verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, again, still talking to Peter, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. Now we'll stop right there. This is an interesting statement the Lord now makes. Because what was Peter's statement in verse 17? Lord, you know all things. And the Lord picks up on that in verse 18, and he says, yeah, Peter, when you were young, you could go wherever you wanted to go, and when you're old, somebody's going to come along and throw you in bonds, put their hands on you. By the way, that's prison, and they're going to carry you off where you don't want to go. You, they're going to take you where they want to take you, and you don't want to go there. So he's demonstrating. The Lord gave Peter a tangible manifest, 
identifiable demonstration that he does know all things. He knows what Peter's life will look like. He knows what his death is going to be like. Again, in Luke 22, what did Peter say? I'm with you to the prison and to death. And you know what the Lord says? There you go. You're going. That's why he said in Luke 22, Pete, you don't understand what you're talking about, buddy. By the end of the night, you're going to have denied me three times. You are not ready for that statement to even be true. Now, come over to 2 Peter chapter 1. Because all of this will help right here. 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter 1. And start in verse 12. 2 Peter 1, 12. Wherefore, I will not be diligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Negligent, sorry. I was reading down again. <laughs> I was reading the, the down. I, actually, I was reading back up the verse above Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in, present, in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, that's his body, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Now, you have, there's a theory out there that was introduced by a guy way back in the day. And uh, he said that Peter was crucified on a cross on an X outside of Rome. There is no scriptural evidence of any fact that Peter ever went to Rome. Now, that's a Roman Catholic idea. That's where they got it from. You, you, uh, uh, you, 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 I can't say the guy's name or I'd say it. And they say that he was crucified upside down because he didn't want to uh, be, be like the Lord. There's a movie, of course, yeah. All right? No. There's no indication of any of that at all. That's just hyperbole. But notice something there. This tells you something here. He knows that he's going to do what? He's going to die. He knows his time is at hand. Now watch fifth, verse 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunning devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein do you do well that you take heed, and so on. What Peter's saying there is, I'm going to die. And you know what? In John 21, the Lord told me I was going to die. And after I'm gone, what I want you to know is that we didn't come down here and tell you a bunch of stories that ain't true. And to back that up is that we have an eyewit we gave you the eyewitness account, but we also have a more sure word of prophecy. We got the word of God that backs all that up. Now, if you drop, if you run back up there to verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall not, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What were they preaching? What was Peter and them preaching? You come out of the end of 1 Peter there, chapter 5, verse 13, to page right. The church that is at Babylon, elected, elected together with you, salute you, and so does Mark. <laughs> He's in Babylon in a church over there preaching and teaching. And he, what is he preaching and teaching? the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They thought the kingdom was coming quickly, didn't they? Peter's an old man. And you know what happened? No kingdom showed up yet. Nobody showed up. So what Peter wanted the group there to know 
2 Peter 1, is that the things that they had been, he had been preaching to them about the kingdom and all the, all the stuff about the Lord Jesus Christ, all of that was not made up, wasn't phony, wasn't false, wasn't fables, verse 16 there. But man, it was an eyewitness account. We were there, we touched him, we held him, we, 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 we hugged him, but yet, man, we got a more sure word of prophecy. And what we preach to you guys, we saw, and we've got God's word on it. So then why the delay? Chapter 3 of 2 Peter. And by the way, this is why when you know people ask about when these books were written, and usually 2 Peter gets placed over a little later because of his comments here about Paul's epistles, but Peter was writing this all along to them. He's an old man. He's getting, he knows his end's coming. Chapter 3, verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come. See that shall come? It's not here right now, but it's coming. In the last days, scoffers walking after their own lust. What are they going to be doing? Well, where is this coming? Verse 4. Verse 8, here's the answer. And, and again, by the way, the delay in Israel's history has been there since day one. He don't tell Abraham, Abraham, you're going to have many all these seeds, more than the seashore, more than the stars. But before that, you're going to die, and your seed's going to go down here and do this, this, and this. And then, and then, then, then they're going to get out and do this over here. And, and Abraham never saw any of that. Delay. He goes into Moses. Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Pharaoh says, nope, ain't going to happen. God says, that's okay. We're going to do that. He will let them go, but we're going to do 10 plagues first. We're going we're to kill the 10 le- gods of, of Egypt. We're just going to nail them right here, right now. Boom. And he does it. Then they get across the Red Sea, and they're supposed to go into the promised land. Uh, like What, an eight-day trip or an 11-day trip or something like that out of Deuteronomy 1 there? And it took them 40 years. He delayed to teach them. Verse 8, 3, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant. So the delay, why the delay? Well, let's explain the delay. Because you know what they were saying was, Peter, you're wrong. When you talk about an everlasting coming kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it isn't here yet, and it should have been here by now. That's how you know 2 Peter is later in the book of Acts. It's not early because Acts covers almost 40 years of of information there. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Hey, just because you can't keep your word doesn't mean God doesn't keep His word but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And he introduces that issue of long-suffering. Then he comes to verse 15, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, and you ought to have written down by, by those two verses, 1 Timothy 1, verse 16, where Paul says there about his conversion, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him the life everlasting. Peter knows he's dying. Now, when you come back to John 21, the Lord's telling him that. Peter, you're going to die. Peter, you're right. I know what the future holds. And your future is prison, where they're going to come. You're going to be old, and you're going to stretch out your, forth your hands, and another's going to gird thee up, 21.18. That's, that's where I'm at, John 21.18. And they're going to carry you off where you don't want to go. They're going to tote you away to prison, and then you're going to die. Happy, happy, happy. But again, Peter's the one that made the boast I'm going with you to prison and to death. And the Lord says, that's fine. I'm glad you made that boast. Now you understand. Now watch verse 19, because I didn't finish the verse. So 19b, And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. 
Peter, all you have to do is follow me. And now you can. You didn't do it before, but now you can. And what, I'll, what, what the Lord's telling Peter is, is I'll enable you to do this. Now, that's the last word in the text to Peter. Because watch verse 20. Then Peter turning about seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following. Now, the, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved, he's the writer of the book, verse 24. This is a disciple which testified these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And when that title, Disciple Whom Jesus Loved, is a title that the writer of the book is using for himself, because John focuses in on the Lord's loving him, not his love for the Lord. Now watch Peter. Then Peter turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following. By the way, what's he doing? He's already doing what now the Lord has told Peter you're able to do. He's been doing all along. Which also leaned on his breast at supper and saith, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? So that gives historical reference to who we're talking about. Verse 21, Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? <laughs> Tragic. Peter's all restored, and we're, we're going to go back down through this because the hour's up. Peter's all restored, he's all, con he's all back, and then he does that, exactly. The Lord says, follow me, Peter's right there, he looks over at John and says, what is he, get to, what is he doing to do? He's already following, he's already doing, and Peter says, what shall this man do? Just, you know, that, that blockhead again. Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? Follow thou me. <laughs> we'll look at all that next time, finish up the chapter, and, and thus the book, but we've got some things to clean up through there, okay, first, all right? Just know what, get what's going on here, 15, 16, 17. Peter's getting, he's being recommissioned, reestablished as the head of the little flock, the head of the 12 apostles, therefore the head of the leadership. And he's talking about Peter's leadership role. And then he's also talking about the edification process that's designed to now flow out. Okay? So we're going to go back and finish, clean up some things in 15 and 16 and 17 and so forth, and then we'll get into 20 to 25 and finish the book out, okay? So just a couple more weeks, and then we'll uh, be done. Maybe three more weeks, we'll be done, all right? Okay, Dear Father, we thank you for the evening, Lord. We thank you for your word, and above all, Lord, we thank you for who we are in your Son, for the blessings and, that we have in him, and for the completeness there, and we can fellowship one with another there. In your name we pray. Amen.